What's up everybody? This is Flash001 USA and it's Tuesday evening. It's June 11th, 2013. It's about 10 p.m. here. Now the last time that I've done a video with this generator in it, its fuel source was the wood gasifier. And somewhere in that video I had mentioned, hey, I actually wanted to try a test where I used propane in the generator to see how it fared and see how it handled under load. So tonight we're going to do just that and I'm going to show you how we're going to do this. First thing, let's look at the fuel source. This is pretty much straightforward and simple. I've got a 55 gallon trash bag full of propane. Now it's not filled up tight like a balloon. It's just enough to inflate it so there's no danger here or anything. I'm using my same plastic line that I used on the gasifier to get the fuel to the generator last time. Also, I'm using the wood gasifier carburetor on here too for the fuel air mixtures. Now I've got one more thing that I added to the arsenal and I'm going to show you this too. I wish I'd have had this last time but I didn't but I will next time for the wood gas test. I've got a variable 1000 watt load, 10 100 watt bulbs in parallel and I can unscrew any of them or all of them so I can change the load settings on this but at full load it's 1000 watts. Also I learned something about this guy right here too. Because they didn't write wattage numbers on it, they just put high and low on it. I wasn't quite sure where this guy stood. Well, I finally found out. On high, it's 1,500 watts. On low, it's 1,000 watts. That brings me back to the night I did the wood gas test with this guy here. I was right. This guy can handle about 1,000 watts without damaging anything. Um, it'll stay, you know, over 50 hertz and definitely over 105 volts at 1,000 watts. So that's pretty safe for any kind of switch and supplies and most of your electronics in general. Anything under 50 hertz or you start dropping below 105 volts and you're looking at damaging something with brownout issues. So that was good to know. Now when I do the wood gas test again, I am going to try something different. I'm going to actually put a small turbo fan in series with the output of the gasifier so that the what goes into the generator here doesn't see a lot of back resistance. I want to see if I can bring the, the power up on this thing under load. I don't know if it will or not, but I'm just going to experiment around. But with all that said, what I want to do right now is I'm going to put this camera on the tripod and we're going to crank this guy up and burn this bag of gas out. And I'm going to take some temperature measurements on the engine and all that good stuff. And I'm going to take some frequency measurements down here and voltage measurements so that I can compare them to the wood gas. Let's get started. Okay, we're running. And um, I can tell you right now, I don't think it runs as good as it does off the of wood gas. It has more torque. I can get more power out of it. But let's look at the way it's finally. Now, it'll idle better when I throw it under load. That's the weird part. So here we go. That's what's 1,000 watts right there. Now, it did smooth the generator up some, and it was at 121 volts without a load. It's still about 121 volts at about 1,000 watts. That's pretty good. Now, I'm going to throw the electric heater on it, full power. So this is actually exceeding what the generator says to take out of it by about four or 500 watts, but it still runs it. And then I'm going to drop it down to 3,000 watts and let this thing finish up in the evening. I wound up giving a little bit more fuel mixture into it. Now my air ratio, I've got it wide open. So unlike the wood gas, instead of doing a 50-50 or something like that, you might have just barely let it, the propane trickle into it and give it a lot of air. But now I'm running 1,500 watts on the electric heater and 1,000 watts right here. I don't know if you're going to be able to see the voltage. It's between 108 and 109 volts. The reason it blinks is to let you know that it's no longer at 120 volts. But regardless, I'm still pushing um, a little over 2,000, about 2,200 watts probably safe to say. But the generator does handle it. Now, let's take some temperature measurements.
Uh, just like the wood gas, the cylinder head was at a lower temperature. Of course, naturally, the exhaust was at a higher temperature. But my main reason for doing this tonight was I wanted a baseline reading using the propane gas. I already knew where it was with gasoline. And the propane is pretty darn close to the gas as far as how well the generator runs under load, that is. But um, I don't think the generator idles as good running this propane as it did with wood gas. It's pretty wild. I mean, it definitely has more power, but listen. Every now and then it'll stutter. Now it's making a liar out of me, but regardless, I mean, it will run off propane, so it's good to know that if I had to do an emergency modification, that I could use a, a bag like that and run this thing with the wood gas carburetor. I'm just about out of gas here, so this is about to come to an end. Propane's all but sucked out of it. everybody that's what I wanted to see right there that was my main thing it's about 11 o'clock p.m. now and I'm gonna go ahead and shut it off there's probably every bit of five minutes worth of gas left in that bag but that's not bad 